Dr. Forskett, uh, thanks for giving us the interview. Um, listen, but before the, the, the senatorial hustings started on nomination night, uh, it, was a, it was unanimously agreed by the candidates that all media were permitted to film the hustings. Um, was Philip Balash one of those who agreed? Yes, all the candidates were there and everybody agreed. So there, w there wasn't any dissent. He had the, op the, the, the opportunity to object. Oh, yes. And didn't? No. no. Uh, okay. Um, Mr. Balash himself is basically standing on a platform of states reform um, and to regain consensus in the House. Uh, he's not even elected yet. And he's gone, he's gone against not only the majority, but his own votes, if you like. Um, you know, he, he said it was OK for, for, for filming to go on. Now he's saying it isn't. Uh, what do you think this says about him as a potential representative of the people? Well, I think that's for people to decide for themselves. I'm not really here to try and make a, a political point against individual candidates. Um, but it does point out that there are issues going on behind the scenes in, to do with elections and how things are run that people ought to be thinking about as well, perhaps. Hmm. Um, OK, Simon Crocroft, who's going to be chairing the meeting, the Council of St Helia will be chairing the meeting, um, the, the Hustings meeting on Monday night. Uh, he has said, as far as he's concerned, he has no objection to the Greek media or any media film. Um, Indeed, it might be said he hasn't got really much choice because uh, the, the, the candidates have all agreed on it um, from, the outset, uh, from the outset. So, but the TV company have been told that they, they're, they're not allowed to film because Mr. Balash, and I believe Rose Coley has agreed with um, Mr. Balash, but should one person have a veto like this? Well, it's important to understand how the hustings come about. Uh, that they're actually technically organised by the candidates and it's up to the candidates collectively to agree the format. You know, we could have all questions and no speeches or all speeches no, or have no hustings at all if that was, if that was um, obviously traditionally and for ease of organisation the constables offer their parish halls and a, and a, a meeting like that. So it, it is a collective thing. So yes, arguably you can't have a veto because it is a collective decision. But it does seem that this is what's happened here. It does, it does look like that, doesn't it? That the TV crew have been told that, that they're not allowed to film on one man say so out, out of um, 13 of you. Yeah, well, certainly there are several candidates uh, who are very unhappy about that. There are more. You're, uh, you... Oh, I'm not alone. No, I've seen the emails and there's, a, there's, a, there's at least four other candidates who are not happy about uh, the, the, the way this has happened. Because okay. there, there is um, a chance that the outside world could gain the impression that the candidates as a whole objected to this. Uh, are you comfortable being potentially tarred with the, with the Balash brush, if you like? Well, I don't want to be tarred with anybody's brush other than my own, actually. Um, but that is, that, that is a real um, concern. Surely the, the, the perception could be made that people could come away with the impression that all the candidates Yes, and that's why, on behalf of some of the other candidates, I've uh, asked to be put in contact with the television, with the Greek television people, so we can express our point of view about how this has gone, so they're aware it isn't um, a unanimous or a collective decision. It's um, a matter of opinion between certain candidates and other candidates. Okay, um, is this an example, as we said, that the TV company have been told that they're, you know, that they're not allowed to film? Um, is this an example of, live, of people living in awe or of fear of Philip Balash before, he, before he's even elected? Like I say, one person, he's just one candidate saying, I don't want the filming to go on. And that seems to be what happened. Shouldn't he have been questioned by whoever it was that contacted the TV company on the candidate's behalf? And shouldn't he have been questioned about it first? Well, I think the interesting question is, is more why was the question put? Because the policy was clear at the outset. Um, and I, I, the question as whether as to whether there should be uh, any restrictions on reporting or not. The candidates made a decision at the outset that there would be no restrictions on reporting. So why was the question asked? Because the policy was set. The policy was. You're saying clear. why did why did the TV company themselves even ask? Well, they wouldn't have known. They wouldn't have known the policy, so they would have asked. Yeah, but the question should not then necessarily wouldn't have been asked to the candidates because the person who they asked had just gone. Well, the policy's been set. You know, it's quite clear. Yes, you can film because I've got the policy here. 
Yeah. Um, you wouldn't expect, um, uh, if it was a state's uh, uh, decision policy, for somebody to come along and go, well, I'm not sure about the policy. I've got the policy in front of me, but I'll just ask you anyway and invite you to object to the policy because the policy has been set. By the candidates. By the candidates. As a whole. As a whole. Not by Mr. Balash. Not by anybody individually. What kind of a message do you think this will send out to the national, international journalists when they're being prevented from filming open, public hustings meetings in Jersey? Well, they're going to get very interested in our definition of democracy, particularly Greeks. I mean, it's, it's, it's quite astounding, isn't it? You, know, you, you have a Greek television company, the home of democracy and free speech, they would argue. Um, they've gone through their um, you know, reign of the colonels that ended in 1974 and all the repressions that went on. And they're pretty sensitive about this. And I'm pretty sure that uh, if I was the, a Greek cameraman, knowing what I know about uh, democracy, I'd be asking for more questions about what's going on in our island. Not just Greece, surely the other European national or international journalists... Possibly, are thinking... but uh, I, I find it particularly poignant that it happens to be Greece and given their history and involvement in democracy. As far as I'm aware, I think Mr Balash's objection is the fact that Mr Sivre might have the willingness, if I'm using the correct words, have the willingness yes. to use defamatory remarks um, against Mr Balash at the, at the Hustings meeting. Can you, can you tell us uh, something about that? What's going on there? Yes, I, I, and there was an email exchange um, which, uh, which I was part of being one of the candidates and he, he wasn't happy about it going out you know, European-wide that, that, that this might happen. Um, and as I pointed out, this is a kind of strange position to be in because some of the speeches, including Mr Sivray's uh, hosting speech at Trinity, are already out on YouTube worldwide available. Um, and of course, the Greek television company is an accredited media, so they, you have all the normal checks and balances and, and recourse to law if necessary, uh, if, if they were to do something and, re and reproduce or, or publicise or publish something that was defamatory. So it, 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 it seems an odd position to be in. Well, again, you know, that's where the, the, the establishment's argument doesn't really stack up with accredited media, does it? Yeah. Uh, now, because the interesting you should say, you should say about the Trinity um, Mr. Sivray's Trinity speech because Tom Grushy published that on his yes. blog site, which is up on YouTube. But before he did that, he actually said to Mr. Balash, would you have any objections to me publishing it? And he, you know, he said, um, or is it just water off a duck's back? And, and according to Tom Grushy, Mr. Balash said, oh no, it's, it's all water off a duck's back. I don't mind. Now, so going, going with that scenario, w wouldn't that... T would you agree with me uh, that Mr. Balash has no fears of the Jersey media because I believe he's got them under, all under control. They're not going to report anything that he doesn't want them to report, but he hasn't got that control over outside media. Would you agree with me on that or not? Well, that's an interesting observation. I wouldn't uh, claim to know what goes on inside Mr. Balash's mind or his uh, motivation for doing that. He did have a brief conversation with me uh, at the St. Saviour Hustings. That's between me commenting back on his objection um, and the subsequent events, where he did say that his agreement at the, uh, the uh, candidates' meeting was predicated on everybody's behaviour on the platform being lawful and reasonable. Um, <clears throat> So I, I'm guessing that he, he thinks that the, there is going to be some unlawful or unreasonable behaviour at the town hustings. Mm. So, again, when we come back to the accredited, like you, you just said earlier, going by the establishment's uh, interpretation of accredited, there is recourse, should Stuart Sivray or anybody, any of the candidates say anything defamatory, libelous, or, and, and the mainstream media broadcast it, there is a recourse, isn't there? Oh, absolutely, yes. So what's Mr. Balash so scared of? I think you have to ask Mr. Balash that. <laughs>